time for last minute breathing for a new kind of air attack. These C-47 pilots have done plenty of biscuit bombing, but this mission is something different. A special kind of ammunition is required before taking off. The mission is to spread powdered death on Manila's insect population. A new kind of blitz, fumigating an entire city from the air. You've heard of crop dusting back in the States. Well, this is the same idea applied to a large city. In Italy, this stuff prevented an outbreak of typhus plague in Naples. Now the death-dealing dust floating in the air over Manila will prevent the spread of epidemics over here. These Filipino kids have seen plenty of air raids in their time, but never anything like this. That stuff they're spreading is DDT, the deadliest insecticide ever discovered. DDT stands for a chemical compound with a name so long nobody can pronounce it. But for the bugs of Manila, DDT means double delirium tremens, or the deadly dust treatment. Anyway, it's a fine white powder made of alcohol, chlorine, sulfuric acid, and benzol. And the combination is concentrated TNT for flies, fleas, lice, bugs, typhus ticks, and malaria mosquitoes but perfectly harmless to men and animals. First, we had to exterminate the Japs from Manila, and now the fumigation is complete. So remember the name, soldier. Dichlorodiphenol trichlorothane. Okay, DDT to you. Hill 2380, a military designation for a piece of high ground in southern Luzon. The hill is full of Japs, and men of the 11th Airborne Division are out to take it. A variety of weapons is used to pound the hillside. Mortars, rockets, and artillery are not enough. Something more is needed. Air power. It's up to the air liaison officer to keep the planes hitting that hill. We're going to try and catch what he's saying. The sound won't be perfect, but this is no training film. This is the real thing. Danger three, danger three. This is rusty. The target is marked. The target is marked right on top. Very nice marking. Stand by. Okay, Cap, give us two more now, right away. Point that ground to you, the plane is heading for the spot of the run, the run there, run in now. Let us know how they're doing, over. All right, thank you, Cap. Danger three, danger three, this is Rusty. Yeah. They're flying too much, too much uh, from uh, northwest. Too much from northwest to southeast. Too much from northwest to southeast. It's big. They're a little bit, uh, a little bit off. But they're creeping into the back here. Creeping into the back here. Long over. Long over. Stand by. Target area. His bombs released. His bombs released. Very nice. Very nice. Still too much on the west side of the target, but are in the target area and are in a good spot. War's oldest weapon, fire. And war's newest weapon, leaflets, are showered on the Jap. This is how it looks to the pilot. Bombs away, bombs away. Bombs very, very 
very, very nicely played. Very nicely played. They're still flying too much west to you. If you can get them around a little bit more, flying more at 70 degrees, it'll be better. But uh, they're, they're doing a nice job. Uh, the last pass, the last pass put jump bombs a little bit over the target. the infantry. You know it's the payoff when these boys move out. Digging their heels into the hillside, they go up to meet the enemy, face to face. The infantry is taking over Hill 2380, one more milestone in the fight to liberate all of Luzon. The 37th Division are fighting at the approaches to Baguio, former summer capital of the Philippines. The battle for Baguio proved to be one of the most grueling of the whole Luzon campaign. For more than 60 days, I Corps troops inched their way over thickly forested mountains and razorback ridges to Baguio. The Japs put all they had into this fight. Baguio was their main headquarters and also the home of the Philippine puppet government. At the bottom of a natural bowl, 5,000 feet high, Baguio offers poor defensive prospects. With the approaches taken, the Jap main body goes over the hill. But there are still strong pockets of resistance left. P-38s pave the way for tanks and infantry by blasting them out of existence. We enter the city. The fall of Baguio leaves the Japs out on a limb in northern Luzon. A parry, the only port remaining to them, is sealed up by air and sea blockade. We captured some small fry, but the big shot got away, like Philippine puppet president Jose Laurel and Jap General Yamashita, the once ferocious Tiger of Malaya. It's safe now for the civilians to return to captured Baguio. Some of them have been hiding in the hills without food or water for 72 hours. not much left of Baguio, once the finest resort town in the Philippines. But buildings have no real permanence. It's the spirit of the people that lives. have what it takes, courage and an undying devotion to what they believe is their duty. Baguio will be rebuilt into something finer. A few scars of war may remain, but in time they will become symbols of a great victory over a ruthless invader.